you so much. Uh, hi, hi, uh, everyone. So Christina already uh, introduced me. My name is Irma. And I'm going to tell you about the little project that we did that is originally organized by Christina and uh, other people from BCE. And uh, um, so what, what we did is we did a small investigation of butterflies on the beautiful island of Madeira. And we used the, the new methodology of monitoring butterflies. Um, it's an additional methodology. So just keep the transit counts as you've been doing them until now. Um, and these 15 minute counts uh, um, allow us to have uh, more data on butterflies. I'm very welcome to tell you all about it. So let's start um, with uh, butterfly monitoring. There are several ways we're doing it um, for the experienced uh, butterfly watchers, but also for people that don't have any experience in, uh, in uh, butterfly knowledge or only a little bit. And uh, some people put a lot of monitoring effort into it, but some people also a little. So if you don't have too many experience with the butterflies or you don't want to take too much effort, then there are the opportunistic data, just the records of the butterflies that you see in the field. And uh, you can record them with uh, observation.org or iNaturalist, and we are very happy about it. But uh, there are sh some shortcomings when it comes to analysis. So, um, if you have a bit more experience and you want to do or put a bit more effort into your butterfly work, then you can have a transect, which you count every week or every second week. It depends a little bit on where you are. And here we see uh, Hank uh, doing uh, monitoring counts of Maculinia teleus uh, for almost 20 years. He does it now. And this is the only time I'm going to mention the Maculinia in this presentation. So, um, but there is also the scientists, the, stu the students who have a lot of experience, um, not only in butterflies, but also in techniques to use. They do mark release recapture. They paint numbers on butterflies, making all the butterfly photographers very angry. But this is a bit that amateur people, citizen scientists uh, cannot do. So, but we have a little something in between the 15 minute count that doesn't take so much effort as you do with the, the transect counts. It is much more flexible and where you need some knowledge of butterflies, but also not too much. So that is really perfect for people who want to join us without being fixed to a specific location or specific scheduled specific times. Um, so the 15 minute counts are much more flexible. They support us with our B BMS and uh, um, they give less precise data, but they do give data on locations and times where it's difficult to work with transect counts. So how do you do it? It's just easy. You count insects for 15 minutes. You can do it in a certain area. You can walk a transect doing it, or you can count from a certain point where you stay fixed. Um, and the nice thing is that you uh, uh, record all the butterflies you see in these 15 minutes and that you also count abundances. So there is many possibilities on using it. You can do it around uh, the area where you live, just uh, uh, below your apartment building. Uh, when you walk your dog, uh, just uh, making a walk somewhere in the park in your city or village. But you can also use it uh, uh, further away in nature reserves on wonderful meadows with many flowers and many butterflies. But also uh, when you go on holidays in the high Alps or other mountains where it's more difficult to come, but where you can see special butterflies. And uh, uh, then such a uh, flexible methodology is really ideal. So uh, here we see Martin and Maria doing a 15 minute count on Madeira, where we did it uh, always uh, with two of us, but you can also do it all alone or with a bigger group. You just walk with a kind of more or less slow tempo and you watch what you see on butterflies and all these butterflies you record. So you can do it uh, in low monitored areas, but also in the more interesting areas. 
So, uh, and this is all the 15 minute counts that we have already all over Europe collected in the EBMS. But of course we would like to have more. How do you do it? There is a nice app to do it on your phone. You can download it both for Android uh, apps, but also for iPhones. You just download the app and you register at the EBMS uh, website, butterfly-monitoring.net. And uh, uh, you can see it uh, records the track that you go, but there is also a little help of identifying butterflies when you're somewhere and you're in doubt. Um, uh, so you, you put it on your phone and then uh, we can get uh, started. This uh, app can be used all over Europe and we are about to add more countries outside Europe as well. But you can also use it for several taxa, not only the butterflies, but uh, meanwhile also moth, bumblebees and dragonflies. And um, we have uh, the application already in 16 languages and where possible, we add the common names of at least the butterflies on the app to make it easier to record the butterflies. But I mean, it's a, it's a project in production, in working, so it improves every day. It's maybe not be perfect for your country, but it will be one day. So you switch the GPS on and then uh, the app records your route wherever you are, but you can also draw a route or you can draw an area, just whatever you like. Um, now we can start. If you open the app, you will see this screen and then uh, we just push the purple button and then our 15 minute count gets started. You don't have to watch the time because it counts backwards from 15 minutes uh, by itself. It checks the GPS and it checks the time all the time. When you want to add species, you press on the add species button and then um, uh, you type either the uh, scientific name or the common name. Lots of make your choice. Well, there is a butterfly and we'd like to add it. We push that species and there it is, Lazio Matamegra. And hey, another one. Now you don't have to uh, do all the, the actions before, you just uh, push on the one and it makes it two. And then you can see that from each butterfly, it uh, records the time, but also the coordinates. And you can also uh, add uh, other information if you like. So you could also add the uh, caterpillars or a picture or a picture of your transect, whatever you like. So in the end, you have a lot of uh, species in your list and uh, the phone will hum by the time your 15 minutes are over. And uh, then you can record the area. So see the transect that you have walked. And you see that it is uh, pending, it's recorded, um, stored on your phone for the moment, but later you have to upload it to the website. And in case later you find out you made some, dis some mistakes or what, you can correct them on the website. So here is uh, what it uh, uh, stores, the whole trends account with all the recorded butterfly species and the list of species. And the nice thing now is that we also know which species were not there. And that is something that is really interesting for the people who do the calculations later on. This butterfly app connects to the website. On the website, after you've uploaded the data, you can find them back. You can check your own data later and you can also correct your data if you like. So um, there are also some uh, instruction movies, just in case I explained it too fast now, which I probably did. Um, you can find more information and videos on the YouTube channel of uh, Butterfly Conservation Europe. And uh, um, later you can see uh, all the, the, um, the links to find more information and to just use it by yourself wherever you like. Well, so now, Let's use it.
do something with our 15 minute counts. And uh, we had a nice uh, project. I thought already Christina uh, organized it and Christina also did a lot of the logistics around this project. I have to say thank you to Juan also who did uh, the um, uh, drone flights and helped us with additional information. And Chris helped uh, with all the calculations that I'm going to show you. What we did, we went to Madeira and we started with a search of an extinct butterfly species. This is Madeira. It's a beautiful island about 700 kilometers uh, west of Africa in the Atlantic Ocean. It's uh, 45 kilometers long and 25 kilo uh, 22 kilometers wide. And it origins from uh, volcanoes in, um, in the Atlantic Ocean. So the highest peaks are 1800 meters. It has a ridge of uh, mountains, these volcano mountains with steep slopes and a very special vegetation as you here see. These are the laurel forests and these laurel forests represent tertiary vegetation of Europe. Some 15 to 40 million years ago, parts of Europe were also covered with these types of evergreen forests with uh, trees and bushes with dark green leaves. But um, uh, with the ice ages, they were pushed south. And then later with the drying of the Sahara, they also uh, vanished from Africa. And now you find this very special type of uh, forest only on uh, um, islands uh, like the Canaries and uh, Madeira with the uh, islands around and on one Dad. tiny island close to Arabia. So this is really very special vegetation and a lot of it you can already see is all ah. accessible because it's on really steep slopes. And it's really no wonder that this is a UNESCO um, World Heritage because it is so really very special. So this is where Madeira lies. And uh, um, when you have a look from satellites, then it looks like this. And you see that at the Northern side, this green, that is what the laurel forests are. And since the island is so high, it creates more or less its own weather. The usually the winds are coming from the north and um, it rains at the northern side of the island while the southern side is a lot drier. So most of the lower forest is on the northern side of the islands. Well, when the Portuguese discovered the islands in, in the 15th century, it was uninhabited and they just called it wood, Madeira. So there's growing a lot of wood there and uh, they harvested it. And uh, what they uh, also did is since the wet side is the northern side and steep high in the mountains, they wanted to have this water for their fields and for irrigation purposes. And they built a network of about 2000 kilometers of levadas, little small irrigation channels along the volcanoes in these islands. To maintain these, these uh, channels, um, there are small tracks along them. So that is where you can walk and that is where we went to count butterflies. This is the map of the um, original document of the UNESCO, where you see uh, the situation of uh, the Loris Silva forests. And our project, if you would like to know more about it, it's from Life for Breast, Conservation of Madeira's Threatened Endemic Butterflies. And obviously, since Madeira is so isolated, it has certain species of butterflies, but also plants and mammals and, uh, and other insects um, that occur only on these islands. And those are the endemic species. Hipparchia madurensis, uh, Parachytifia, uh, Gonepteryx madurensis, and also Pyrus monostoni. Four species of butterflies exclusively on this island. And obviously we were mostly interested in those species. There are some vagrants from Africa, but you hardly ever see them. We also haven't seen them. There are two nasty species invaded from Europe. 
Pierre's Rappé, the small white in 1971, and the Parag Egeria, the speckled wood, in 1976. That is also uh, uh, something we spent some attention on. And then there are the normal species of Madeira, quite a short list. And uh, you see that uh, some of them, like the small copper on Madeira, they look slightly different than they look on the mainland, but uh, it's basically the same species. So it's really nice to be there and to do butterfly research. Our main species. So what did we do? We went there on a holiday and we took our butterfly friends with us. Christina organized this nice house with trees and gardens and uh, Every day we did 15 minute counts. Here we see Martin and Maria doing one. Where it was too steep and where the area was too inaccessible, we used the drone. Here is Chris and Juan flying with the drone. And you see them standing at the edge of one of the levadas. They're almost along elevation line, so it's really easy to walk the levadas and count butterflies. And here we see Christina at the coast. Here, it's easy uh, to see all the butterflies around and count them because it is so open. But uh, of course, it's not everywhere like this. When you go into the lower forest, it looks like this. So you mainly see nothing. But there are lots of open spaces and gaps in the canopy. And when there are gaps in the canopy, then we have to make a little break, wait for a minute or what, and have a look which butterflies are there. Here it's Rudy and Goga doing a butterfly count up high on one of the volcanoes. And like this, we walked all over the island and we spent there, um, not only us, but also several other people and some people from Madeira as well. Um, we spent there 40 days counting butterflies with a whole total of 18 people. And on the map, you see all the levadas that we've done, some only once, some several times. We visited 49 locations and uh, uh, we did 771 15 minute counts. And doing these 15 minute counts, we walked 506 kilometers. Um, and Juan, who did the drone flights, uh, flew eight kilometers with the drone over the steep uh, uh, canopies of the Lori Silva, as you see them in the lower right corner. So uh, that provided us with uh, lots of data. You see, we counted more than 10,000 butterflies on the island and we saw 14 different species. And the nice thing is, the one we counted most is one of the endemic species as I marked them here in dark green in the graph. That was uh, uh, the Madeiran grayling of which we thought 2,700 butterflies on 41% of the transects. Uh, the next one is uh, a nasty one, a problematic species, Parakegeria from Europe of which we thought 2,050 butterflies on as much as 80% of our routes. And then there is Chithia, the endemic species, the closely related species, also a lot more than 2,000, which was also really very nice. Um, the numbers of Pieris rape, the other problematic species were a lot lower. And what we were really very happy about was that from Gonepteryx madarensis, the Madeiran brimstone, we counted uh, 117 butterflies and we found it on 33% of the routes that we did. And this butterfly, they told us was really very, very rare. And uh, it was rare, but we found it more often than we expected before starting this research. And the fourth endemic species, Spiris volastoni, unfortunately none. Let's have a look. This is uh, the Madeiran uh, grayling, uh, Hipparchia madarensis. Uh, it occurs in habitats like this with lots of rocks and grasses and stony places. And you'll find most of these places on the high plains on the island, as we can see here on the map. 
um, there were two different high planes. You see the dots more or less concentrated. And uh, uh, the density can be quite high with 98 butterflies per thousand meter. All these densities were corrected to the distance that we walked. So only uh, um, the area that we truly um, investigated. Um, just like our graylings, the caterpillars feed mainly on uh, grasses and the caterpillars hibernate and you can find the adults in summer, more or less from June to uh, uh, September. Um, our next endemic species, this uh, nice uh, reddish brownish speckled uh, wood is the Madeiran speckled wood, Parage xifia. It occurs mainly in the laurel forest, but then often at the edges of the laurel forests, um, such like uh, these little stream valleys where you can find it. Um, the caterpillars also uh, feed on grasses, just like uh, the, the European speckled wood. And when you have a look at the map, the density is uh, up to uh, 23 butterflies of 1000 meter. And we can find this really beautiful uh, species, uh, mainly at the places where there is good laurel forest. So they occur mainly in the north of the island and not so much in the south. And you won't find them in urban areas close to where people are. Um, I can't see what this is. Ah, this is uh, um, the European uh, speckled wood. And this one you find in uh, higher densities, uh, 60, 64, up to 64 per thousand meter and wider spread in comparison to the Madeiran speckled wood. So also in urban areas, also in parks, also where there are eucalyptus forests, because this is one of the problems of the laurel forests in Madeira. There are eucalyptus plantations and uh, um, after bushfires, this eucalyptus is able to spread while um, the lorry silvers um, are much more, um, they, they just can't uh, spread that fast. So if we have a look at the map um, uh, combining these two distributions, you see in red, the, the European speckled wood and in blue, the Madeiran one. So uh, uh, there are still blue dots, fully blue dots, where there are no European speckled wood. So there is still habitat where there is only the uh, Madeiran speckled wood. And um, at least for the moment, maybe that in the fringes and the edges, the European speckled wood has uh, um, outcompeted uh, at local level the Madeiran one, but uh, at the island level, it doesn't seem that the European will be able to really make the island's uh, butterfly extinct. At least for now, we see lots of spaces where you can only find the uh, uh, special endemic species. So that is really nice to see. Um, the next one is our very special uh, Gonepteryx, Gonepteryx madurensis, uh, um, which occurs only where there is more or less perfect lower silver in uh, nice streams and the density is always quite low. And it's still a butterfly difficult to see and difficult to monitor. And uh, the usual way you see them is uh, when they fly up in the canopy far away from you. And uh, while uh, here on this um, video, you see the true habitat of the butterflies. They deposit their eggs on uh, Ramulus glandulosa, which is uh, um, a shrub, little tree that grows along the streams and also a bit on the slopes. But along these streams, that is where the females go to put their eggs on. They're quite mobile. They fly up to the canopies and uh, sometimes you see them feeding also along the vegetation, the flowers along the more open um, levadas. And one day 
that was really very special. And I, I just have to tell it to you because it was so, so very special. After doing our um, 15 minute counts, we often went to special places where we knew there were records of this Madeira and brimstone. So one day, um, uh, Christina, Juan, Chris and me went to such a place. But usually by that time, the weather was already quite bad. So the probability of seeing them was quite low. But there we went up this, this little stream and uh, then we saw one. And just climbing through the stream, we tried to go there over the rocks and uh, uh, first pictures were made. And then the wind came up and blew this butterfly um, from the trees up to a rock in the stream on which I was sitting and it was landing 50 centimeters behind me, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't make a picture. And everyone screamed like, Emma, make a picture, make a picture. The only one who was able to make a picture was Chris. So Chris tried to walk to me through the stream and then an ex blow of wind came, blew this butterfly onto the water. And there it was standing with its four legs outside floating on the river and everyone was screaming like, no, 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 no. Because there was a little waterfall a bit further, but Chris just took two large steps and picked it up out of the water. And there we have this butterfly, perfect, rare butterfly on Chris's hands. So we put it back into the vegetation and I don't know how many hundred pictures we made, really so many. And it was the most special moment we had there in all these days that we spent on Madeira. We were really happy about that. Here you see it the Madeira brimstone with the stream valleys where its food plant grows. And unfortunately, um, here is Volastoni, the most special one, we didn't see it. So we can confirm that it is, has more or less gone extinct around uh, the 1980s. No one exactly knows what its host plant was, um, probably um, one of the uh, uh, crumbus species, one of the cabbage species, wild cabbage species there. Used to be really rare in the laurel forest, but then became a bit more abundant when um, uh, cabbage species uh, um, were uh, grown uh, to sell on the island. And then um, the uh, small white uh, Pyrrhus uh, rape was introduced. And after that, uh, uh, Pyrrhus uh, um, volastoni declined significantly. And the last record was probably somewhere in the 1980s. And we think um, it, it wasn't direct competition that made it uh, vanish, but uh, probably probably a parasite or maybe another kind of disease, a virus, whatever. So, uh, but then you obviously have found one dot in Funchal that gives us a little bit of hope. So in the end, we managed to really see the already extinct Pyrrhus volastoni we met the people of the uh, Natural History Museum of Madeira in Funchal, and there was a box of these butterflies. And even they make your heart bounce, even though they're extinct, they're never there. You cannot see them flying around in the lower force anymore, but see them on a pin is already really very special. At least it was to me. I've never seen an extinct butterfly before. So, uh, Finally, we saw this species as well. This is uh, the team that joined uh, me in uh, the time I spent on Madeira, but there were more people. I have to say thank you to all the people who joined helping uh, to collect data. And I hope um, that you will also use 15 minute counts on your holidays and collect butterfly data and just uh, uh, help us to protect butterflies more. For the ones going to Madeira, there are nice uh, field guides on uh, all of the butterflies on the island. 
You can find them also on the website of uh, BCE, the Butterfly Monitoring. Um, so thank you and thank you all for listening.